Hey students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is language families, and here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over, and get ready to copy some vocab and take some notes. A language is a learned system of communication. Language is cultural. A language's words and phrases reflect the unique surroundings, experiences, and values of a certain culture. So different cultures have developed different languages to express themselves. When a culture also develops a system of writing, we say that the culture has a literary tradition. And that just means that their language is spoken and written. English has a literary tradition. You're looking at English writing on your screen right now. Cherokee, an endangered language that you learned about earlier in the unit, did not have a literary tradition until the early 1800s when it was first written down. Before that, it was only passed down orally. In today's lesson, I want you to think of language as a living organism, like an animal. One way that languages are like living organisms is that they evolve over time, branching off from each other and sharing common ancestors. You may have seen an evolutionary tree like this one. It shows when organisms diverged and how closely related they are to other organisms. For example, this one shows that dogs and humans diverged from a common ancestor in the near past, while humans and fish diverged from a common ancestor much longer ago. So we can conclude that humans and dogs share more genes in their DNA and are therefore more closely related than humans and fish do. Languages are similar. They evolve over time, sharing common ancestors and diverging from each other at different points. But instead of sharing genes with their relatives, like animals do, languages that are related share words. So linguists, people who study languages, look for similarities in vocabulary to tell how closely two languages are related to each other. One other comparison I'll make between languages and organisms is the way they are classified. You may have also seen one of these taxonomies of living things. Taxonomies group things into categories based on how closely they're related. With organisms, the broadest category is kingdom, followed by phylum, class, order, family, genus, and then finally the most specific category, which is species. So dogs, butterflies, and fish are all part of the animal kingdom, but only the dogs belong to the genus and species called Canis familiaris. Languages are the same, but instead of calling the broadest category kingdom, we call it family. And a language family is a group of languages that shares a distant ancestor. There are over 100 language families, and together they encompass all the languages known to have been spoken by humans. Here is the order of taxonomy for language. The broadest category is the family, followed by branch, and then group, and then the language itself, and finally, within languages, we have a very specific category called a dialect or a creole. You'll learn more about dialects and creoles later. Now let's look at one language family called the Indo-European family. And we're going to look at one of its languages, English. I've highlighted English with this red arrow. So you can see that the English language is part of the Indo-European language family. That's this broad trunk here of this tree. It's part of the Germanic branch, and it's part of the West Germanic group. German and Dutch are also part of this group, 
So that means that English is closely related to those languages. A language like Hindi, which is on the right side over here, is also part of the Indo-European family, but it is a part of a different branch than English is. In this case, it's part of the Indo-Aryan branch. So we can say that English, German, and Hindi are distantly related. They're all part of the same family, but English and German are more closely related than English and Hindi. Now let's look at Mandarin. Mandarin is part of a completely different family than English or German or Hindi. Mandarin is part of the Sino-Tibetan family. And that means that Mandarin and English aren't related at all. Here is a graph showing the major language families by the number of total speakers in the world. The Indo-European family is the most spoken family on the planet, and it includes widely spoken languages like English, Hindi, Spanish, and Urdu. Sino-Tibetan is the next most widely spoken family, mainly because of one language, Mandarin. Languages in these two families are spoken by a majority of people in the world. Other large families include the Niger-Congo family, which includes Swahili, the Afro-Asiatic family, which includes Arabic, and Austronesian, which includes the language Indonesian. Now it's time to review the objectives, and if you don't know the answer to any of them, rewind the video and look again. I will see you in class. Bye, students.